In this video, I just want to show you a technique I use to remove zero access from a live system. Um, now, most people have been doing this from an offline system, such as a WinPE-based CD or a uh, slaving the hard drive to a TechBench computer, such as such as that. Um, the reason for that is there are two components to this system. Um, one is uh, a hidden file system, which is just about impossible to delete. Um, if you're familiar with zero access you know that uh, it it will be in the Windows directory and it's going to be an NT uninstall directory. Um, NT uninstall KB, a random set of numbers and um, it's not this one because we have access to it. This is obviously a Windows service pack. It's this one because we get an access denied trying to get it. This is the hidden file system bit. Um, excuse me. Um, that's the hidden file system bit. Now the other component uh, is an executable and um, the executable is uh, going to prevent you from uh, tampering with that file system for one thing. It also prevents you from tampering with itself. Um, it's You're not going to be able to terminate the process and you certainly can't <coughs> excuse me, you certainly um, can't uh, prevent it from running um, without this one technique I will show you. And that is the IFEO modifier. IFEO stands for Image File Execution Option. Um, you'll find out more about that on TechNet uh, or also, um, well, you'll, you'll find a lot more technical description on TechNet than you'll find on my website, but um, you'll get the idea on my website if you go to uh, foolishit.com in the left hand side look for IFEO modifier. In any case, uh, I'm going to demonstrate the IFEO modifier functionality for you with Notepad. Um, we'll just pretend that Notepad is malicious executable. When I fire up IFEO modifier, I can select Notepad from the list of running processes. And what I want to do is install this IFEO dummy .exe. What that's going to do is going to put that actually in this uh, IFEO silent dummy in your uh, Windows directory so they run in place of uh, Notepad. But mind you, you don't have to install the dummy executables. It's, it's just entirely optional. Um, but I'm going to do that for demonstration purposes. Normally I don't bother. Now, you see I've created the IFEO. Um, what that's going to do is prevent Notepad from running in the future. Um, problem is Notepad is already running. So um, we'll just terminate it. And now I will show you Notepad. But instead of Notepad, you see my dummy executable has fired and the dummy executable will say a process you blocked is attempting to run. I am running instead. Um, that's because anytime you launch Notepad, my dummy executable is going to run instead. Uh, that's due to this IFEO. It's kind of a neat little trick you can do with the registry. Um, again, see my website for the details. But uh, what we're going to do with that is use it to combat this, this uh, zero access malware. Um, this uh, executable that most people remove offline, it's not going to be a problem for the IFEO modifier. All we need to do is create the IFEO. I will use the silent dummy so we don't get a notification every time it attempts to run. Now of course that's not doing anything about the executable running right now so you will need to reboot the live system. <clears throat> If I forget um, by the end of the video to remove the IFEO, um, I will tell you it's not going to do any damage to the system by leaving it there. But um, just to clean up after yourself, try to remember and remove it. Uh, I, I usually try and remember. 
D7 should fire in just a moment. Yep. So now um, we haven't, well, we haven't deleted that executable, but we've neutralized it. You'll note that um, I'm going to fire Task Manager. And you'll note that the um, numbered executable is no longer in the list of running processes. Wonderful. Well, there is an a numbered executable, but it is not the numbered executable. Um, that could be a remnant of something else. This isn't the only um, malware that I've uh, uh, installed on this system. In any case, uh, let's move on. We're done with the IFEO modifier for now. We want to go to uh, Malware Scan. And you're just going to look through these lists, uh, make sure there's nothing there that's not cool. Um, this is definitely not cool. Um, we're going to get rid of that. You see it's not signed. In fact, just to show you uh, another nifty feature of D7, we can just upload that to VirusTotal directly from Malware Scan. We'll see what VirusTotal has to say about it. 39 of 43, Trojan, backdoor, bot. Mm. Excellent. We'll, well, it's running. it's a running process, but D7 will delete that. It'll first terminate the uh, process and then delete it. Okay, we're going to move on. And um, I'm, as I recall, now now you see the IFEO here, and um, we're just going to leave that for now until we find and delete that executable. In fact, we're going to leave it until we um, remove this uh, rootkit entirely because we don't want that executable to be recreated. Ah, I have another one. This I don't believe, I think this is a leftover. It's not actually part of zero access. It may be a leftover from another uh, piece of malware I've had on the system. But um, we'll just take care of that right now. Uh, the value for this registry should, uh, key should be Internet Explorer. Um, not this other obvious malware. So we'll just uh, check that out. Now it's clean. Okay, I'm going to move on down to the file system portion of malware scan. And now here we have this uh, malicious executable that we have our IEO based on. IFEO. Uh, say it six times really fast. I can't say it once. Just going to delete that. Now out of place files I've touched on in another um, video and I would encourage you to watch uh, all of my videos if you haven't. Um, I have this theory of what files uh, are out of place so just, just not uh, in the right spots and that's uh, what D7 looks for and more often than not they're malicious. Temp directory nothing should be in there right now. Um, we've got my IFEO dummies. Nothing there. And I don't believe anything will turn up here as well. Now I'm done. Um, alternate data stream. Uh, when I've seen this uh, zero access in the wild, most of the time that malicious executable is usually hidden in an alternate data stream. Um, in this particular sample that I have, uh, for some reason it's not. But we'll just work with what we've got here. Okay, now the the last portion of removing zero access um, involves uh, getting rid of the um, this directory here. Um, the thing is, is that uh, it's it it is a directory, but there's a reparse point on top of the directory, 
and it's preventing you from uh, gaining access to it. Um, you know that that's not legitimate because this is a legitimate directory and um, contains uh, Windows, uh, Windows uninstall information for some Windows update of some sort um, that's been done on the system. But uh, this is most definitely malicious. This is part of the zero access rootkit. Now, I just happen to know it's there and happen to know what it is. Um, but uh, for you to find out when you don't know, we're going to use NTFS junctions, which used to be on the tweaks tab and still is, but now is part of the malware re removal tab because of zero access specifically. What I want to do is scan the Windows folder because I know a zero access, that's where Windows is. Now it is an NT uninstall KB um, directory and it will have a random set of numbers after it so you never know quite which one it is and on a seasoned Windows system um, you may have 50 of those uh, laying around in the Windows directory so you're not going to want to click on each one just to find out where your access denied is coming from so we we'll are use this NTFS junctions wrapper and um, this will uh, find the symbolic link on top of the directory and the target. What we want to do is just highlight it and click destroy junction. Give it a moment. First part, um, the first part of what we need to do is um, take ownership of the junction and that's just the first part of the process. So we're going to uh, let's see, I'm running under system account, so we'll give system um, ownership. Okay, now, a directory beneath the reparse point exists. Click yes to delete or no to explore the directory. Well, I'll just do no. That'll open it back up Explorer here, but now we're able to open the directory and see what's inside. This is, uh, these are files and directories that just loader <laughs> that just rep re represent the um, uh, file system, the hidden file system that's on this, uh, that's part of this malware. But it's of no concern anymore because now we can delete it. Obviously something in there is being used because it took D7 a minute to delete it, but now as you see it's gone so nothing is is used anymore um, you can rescan for junctions and you won't find any um, our task manager should be clean um, pretty much we are done with the zero access removal now you can go through a battery of, of uh, tests with the malware scan this that and the other um, run your malware bytes and um, throw in a TDSS killer. I always run a scan with TDSS killer on just about anything I, I run across. It's very good and takes care of a lot more than just TDSS. But um, in any case, uh, uh, I almost forgot to get rid of that IFEO. So now I have a clean system. Um, I've removed uh, zero access from a live system which to me is important because I do a lot of remote work and um, I, I just can't accept failure uh, when it comes to remote work or, or I certainly try not to in a lot of uh, cases so I need the tools and techniques uh, that, that uh, enable me to remove this malware from a live system as opposed to doing it in an offline environment so I hope you learned something uh, from this video, at least about D7 if nothing else. If you knew about zero access and you knew how to take care of it, I can certainly show you how to do it manually uh, sometime. <laughs> but um, I believe this has got us covered for the uh, for this video. Um, if you do have any malware samples that you'd like to see a YouTube video of me removing, please send them my way. Um, I accept just about anything, but I prefer 7-zip format, um, password protected if you, if you would, and um, 
I do prefer that you rename the extension of the file so that uh, I just want to ensure that my mail client does not uh, scan inside the compressed file and uh, find out what's in there because I don't want it rejecting important mail, obviously. So if you have any samples, send them my way. That's foolishtech at foolishit.com. That about does it. Look forward to some more videos, maybe before Christmas. Have a good one.